1965, a Vietnamese Buddhist monk living in the United States issued a statement, a call to peace. This call to peace, which was rooted in the Buddhist tradition of compassion, invited the people of the United States to end the war in Vietnam. This same Buddhist monk was a correspondent with Martin Luther King Jr. and an advocate for the civil rights movement. Leaving the United States and settling in France, this monk continued to be an advocate for social justice in France. This monk was Thich Nhat Hanh. Thich Nhat Hanh is known as one of the most popular spiritual teachers in the world today. He's written over 50 books on meditation, mindfulness, and compassionate living. Many people don't know that 50 years ago in the United States, he was known as a social justice advocate. You see, Thich Nhat Hanh understood and continues to understand that our experience of spirituality, our meditation, our practice leads us first to compassion for ourselves, then to compassion for others and recognizing that others are suffering because of that compassion we have for them, we then work to alleviate the suffering. Alleviating the suffering leads us to social justice. A spiritual teacher from another tradition who held this same basic belief in the importance of social justice was Roman Catholic Jesuit priest Dan Berrigan. Dan was best known for his work against the Vietnam War. He was in the same era. And after the Vietnam War, continued to work against nuclear proliferation. Dan was a very contemplative man, soft-spoken and quiet, and a poet. He published many books of poetry. I had the occasion to meet Dan a few times. And on one of those occasions, we were hiking in the mountains in eastern Pennsylvania. I asked Dan why he, a person who was so reflective, contemplative, and peace-centered, was living in New York. He lived in New York most of his life. And Dan told me that New York City was a place where people were often living on the edge, where there was a great deal of hardship and pain. And it was important for him to be there, to be there as a witness to something peaceful to something contemplative and reflective. And he clearly saw his life, not just the actual social justice advocacy, but the way he lived as a way of witnessing to the need for people to live in better ways so that his life was meant to be a source of healing and hope for others, even people living on the edge. Many great spiritual teachers, people like Dorothy Day, the Dalai Lama, Martin Luther King Jr., Archbishop Desmond Tutu, all understood that an integrated spiritual life leads naturally to social justice work. They all had this understanding that because of the transformative experience of spirituality and integrating that experience in one's own life, that one in turn sees others with compassion and works to relieve pain and make the world a better place. Many people mistakenly believe that spirituality is all about me finding my own place of peace and being relieved of stress. And indeed, there's that dimension to spirituality and spiritual practice, but that isn't the end in itself. Instead, it's not just about staying within my comfort zone, but learning to recognize the pain that is in the world and responding to that pain, reaching out to others in a caring way, and recognizing that sometimes the caring way is to work for social justice, to take a stand in opposition to the things that are marginalizing people and that are causing them distress in their life. To put this simply, your spiritual practice, as you integrate that spiritual practice more and more in your life, it should first draw you into yourself, 
but then back out of yourself so that you become more aware of people around you and their experience, which is often colored by pain and suffering. And spirituality should open you to respond to that pain and suffering, to ease that pain, and to work for a better world. Thanks for your time today and for being here. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel and leave some comments so that I can respond to you.